so I stay pretty um, interconnected with uh, recovery people and places that help people in recovery and crisis and so I watch a lot of the events and the issues that are going on around that and October is National Bullying Prevention Month which is a pretty big deal in the people that I generally serve. It's a pretty big issue and a lot of damage is done this way but very little attention is brought to that area. So I want to also add focus and raise awareness to the choice of bullying because it is a choice. And I also want to draw awareness to this in hopes that others will know that you have a choice to speak up or at least not serve those who use their authority to bully and intimidate. We are moving into some very critical days as far as time goes, like globally, we're moving quickly into some critical times and the gospel has to be communicated well it has to be communicated in the right spirit and it has to the body has to work the body of Christ is going to have to work for the maximum impact to be made and if that doesn't happen there's going to be loved ones from all of our all of our lives we're going to have loved ones that are forfeited to hell and I think that it's critical that we acknowledge anything we can to try to repair what we can on our side just so the gospel is able to go forth in power because I think everyone can see we're running into the last days and the more crazy it gets I believe the more um, welcome the gospel will be and the more nonsense um, people aren't going to tolerate so I say nonsense in the sense that the things that we get ourselves tied up in we need to start prioritizing Jesus and people in my experience with bullying which I've been on both sides of this I am not one who can sit here and say I've never used manipulation, intimidation. I have certainly had my fair share of this towards me, but I have also extended it plenty of times to others. And I'm hoping that in my last five years especially that God has burned out of me um, any need to elevate myself or exert myself or I have one desire and that is to help people see and know Jesus and to get free from the enemy and any time I would cross over into any kind of behavior like this for any reason is going to hurt the gospel and so I've got this on the front of my mind pretty much all the time that I conduct myself in a manner worthy of carrying the gospel. But I will say that in my experience in ministry, which I've had 31 years of experience inside ministries and I've, I've interfaced with many, um, those who really do operate this way, who are in, use intimidation, manipulation, bullying tactics, are going to be the last to ever admit that. And they certainly are not willing to sit down and look at it when you tell them this is how you're feeling. I 
honestly feel they don't even believe it's true. They, they appear to feel entitled to using their authority that way as their gifting or their office. They will explain why they have to come across the way that they do. So I've heard that many times and I'm going to say that some people are not teaching teachable and they will not hear so this is not for them this is for those who really want to filter their conduct through what would Jesus do and do you want to be used in a great way to as an ambassador for Christ because if you do all of our personal rights have been laid down at the cross we will listen and learn to be like Christ. And so bullying by definition is unwanted aggressive behavior that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. The behavior is repeated and has a potential to be repeated over time. So bullying can include actual threats made, spreading rumors, attacking someone physically or verbally and rumors don't have to be false they can be true it's just spreading tales about someone attacking someone physically or verbally excluding someone from a group on purpose bullying can also take place with technology which is known as cyberbullying and that has become a pretty big issue and this includes mean texts mean messages mean emails that also would serve to um, threaten, manipulate, trap um, rumors sent by email or posted on social networking sites, embarrassing photos, videos, websites, or the creation of fake profiles. There should not be a need for fake profiles. So if you're a person who walks in truth, you should not need a fake profile. I'm just there's no reason you should need a fake profile. There are many other aggressive behaviors that probably don't fit the legal definition of bullying, but they are just as serious and they need the same force of intervention as bullying because there's just so many behaviors that can be included in this that the definition's probably much broader than it actually is stated but the impact of the behavior will show you if it falls into a bullying category because the person is is faced with um that that improper unbalanced power struggle although we don't find the word bullying in the bible we do find the word brutish b-r-u-t-i-s-h a synonym of the brutal thuggery associated with thieves, assassins, and savage beasts. And the Hebrew and, Cre Hebrew and Greek words translated brute or brutish mean stupid, foolish, and irrational as cattle. And we can gather from the specific words that they use that those who bully are acting as cattle or other beasts incapable of rational thought. It's unfortunate to see this kind of behavior is very common around us, very common in the church, both women and men, kids, all ages. It is incredibly common and it's getting much worse by the month, day. Handbook of Workplace Bullying, Emotional Abuse and Harassment reports that workplace bullying represents a powerful stressor and a severely traumatic experience that may profoundly shatter people's assumptions about themselves and their surrounding world. And the impact of workplace bullying causes a diverse array of mental health problems, including depression, anxiety, psychological distress, post-traumatic stress disorder, and burnout. And studies focusing on the mental health effects of witnessing bullying and the impact of mental health on the exposure to workplace bullying show that that damage is also very extreme. Do something.org gives 11 facts about bullying in the youth. One, 
in the U.S., one in five students ages 12 to 18 has been bullied during the school year, and I do feel that that's a higher number, but they don't report it. Approximately 160,000 teens have skipped school because of bullying in the U.S. Students who reported that they were frequently bullied scored lower in reading, math, and science than their peers who reported that they were never or rarely bullied. The most commonly reported type of bullying is verbal harassment at 79%, this is kids, followed by social harassment, 50%, physical bullying, 29%, and cyberbullying, 25%. Labeling an incident as bullying can be important because it influences whether students tell an adult as well as how adults respond to the report of the student. And more than half of bullying situations, 57%, stop when a peer intervenes on behalf of the student being bullied. Sixth grade students experience the most bullying at 31%. One in three is being bullied in sixth grade. 70% of school staff have seen bullying. 62% witnessed bullying two or more times in the last month. And 41% of staff witnessed bullying once a week or more. Students are less likely to report bullying as they get older. Only 39% of high schoolers notified an adult of bullying. 42% of students who reported being bullied at school indicated that the bullying was related to at least one of the following characteristics. 30% was their physical appearance, 10% was race, 8% was gender, 7% a disability, 7% ethnicity, 5% religion, and 4% sexual orientation. Over half of students ages 12 to 18 who reported being bullied believed their bullies had the ability to influence what other students thought of them. Walt Laramore, MD from Crosswalk shares, there seems to be a link between these responses, the youth bullying and violent music, movies and video games, which often enhance feelings that are already there of low self-esteem and even encourage self-destructive behavior. Many such forms of entertainment promote violence as an appropriate payback for bullying. Parents must evaluate if these forms of entertainment are equal to pouring gasoline on a smoldering fire in a young person already distressed emotionally. It, it, is, it is shocking how little oversight is given to not just children but adults in this area of gaming movies music we have this show up all the time when we're addressing the spiritual issues in a person these things you are what you take in music movies tv shows gaming you're participating you're in agreement already what that does to a person's soul is dumbfounding and to allow that to be the diet of a child when they're formative when they're coming into their identity is probably one of the worst things that could happen to them because they end up in situations they are not ready to process and then they just become numb to the reality of that if they're in a real situation where they have to respond to danger this is why you see um, the elderly being beat up on buses by people trying to rob them and everybody ignores it or you see you hear about women being assaulted in parking lots and everyone just walks on by that's the kind of mentality that is created when we just numb people out with violence in their movies and their I can still remember the first movies that I saw when I was young and I saw something happen that I mean, one was a guy got rolled in a rug and pushed into a pool so I didn't even see a murder. I did not see, um, I did not see a body. I just knew he was probably there was someone in that rug, and they pushed him into a pole. And I, that tormented me for a long time because I thought, 
he couldn't get out of there. And so I was, that, that didn't leave me for a lot. I still remember it. So if you, if you just keep bombarding the young with these images and these realities, they're going to numb out. They're not going to have a sensory for the real thing. And so what they will allow themselves to go through will be far more intense and damaging than you can even possibly imagine. We need to take training of children very seriously. You should not let them have all lengths of freedom to anything that is digital. There should be really strong, um, there should be really big boundaries on things because they just aren't ready for what they're seeing. And it is going to mess them up a lot. It's hard to correct as an adult when you have first responses, when you have default thoughts, that you, it's really hard to fix as an adult. It's vital that we teach them that they should honor Jesus, they should honor others, and how Jesus feels about them, no one can take that away, no one. They need to know their value is in Christ, not in what humans say about them, and that has to be cemented in their identity because the world is going to rob them of anything less. They're going to define themselves by success or by um, peers. They're going to, by popularity, by social media standing. There's so many different ways. And the suicide rate is rocketing because they don't know their value outside of others. Whether they are rejected or shamed, if they know their identity for eternity is in Christ alone, they can pull through. And this trying time of youth and the hard things that happen as kids can serve to really build um, a thickness that will take them through some serious persecution later on in their lives. So God can really use it. A survey by Harris Pohl on behalf of the doctors of osteopathic medicine on adult bullying finds 31% of Americans have been bullied as an adult. School bullies grow up to become office bullies if nobody stops them. And it's also found that adults are being bullied at levels similar to adolescents and the health consequences may be reducing their ability to even function in their life. The online survey of more than 2,000 U.S. adults found 31% have been bullied as an adult and 43% say the behavior has become much more accepted in the past year. The survey defined bullying as being subjected to repeated negative behavior intended to harm or intimidate as defined by the Workplace Bullying Institute, workplace bullying is repeated health harming mistreatment of one or more persons, the targets, it calls them by one or more perpetrators. It is abusive conduct that is threatening, humiliating or intimidating, work, work interference, sabotage, which prevents work from getting done or verbal abuse on the job. And there's a national prevalence of workplace bullying. According to the 2021 workplace bullying survey conducted in January of 2021, 30% of Americans have suffered abusive conduct at work. Another 19% have witnessed it. 49% are affected by it. And 66% are aware that workplace bullying happens around them. Additional key findings from this survey include an estimated 48.6 million Americans are bullied at work. 48.6 million. Bullying during remote work happens most in virtual meetings, not email. So bullying even happens when you're sitting at home working. For those doing remote work, 43.2% is the bullying rate. Virtual work poses an even greater danger of bullying. Prevalence of bullying, 30% have direct experience being bullied. That is up 57% from 2017. 
and those bullied, 52% non-management employees and 40% managers. Women bully, women bullies, bully women at twice the rate that they bully men. It's important that it's noted that bullying isn't always physical. According to this survey, workplace bullying is driven by perpetrators who need to control the targeted individuals and it's a set of acts of commission, doing things to others or omission, withholding resources from others. However, don't assume unfairness on your job is bullying. That is not the, that is not the comparison. Victims of bullying in America reported significant negative effects on their health. The poll found of those who have been bullied as an adult that 71% suffer from stress, 70% experience anxiety and depression, 55% report a loss of confidence, 39% suffer from sleep loss, 26% have headaches, 22% experience muscle tension or pain, 19% reported having a mental breakdown, 17% noted an inability to function day to day, calling in sick frequently. When it's your workplace, you can't escape it. You can't, you're stuck in it. Other health responses to the emotional strain induced by bullying include gastrointestinal changes, nausea, elevated blood pressure, and cardiovascular issues, according to osteopathic physicians, typically understood to be a problem children face and outgrow, the new findings show that bullying and its subsequent impact on mental and physical health continues long into adulthood, often in the workplace, home, and an educational setting. The poll found a quarter of adults, 25%, have experienced silent treatment from an individual or a group on a repeated basis as an adult, while one in five, 21%, have had someone spread lies about them that no one else dares to refute, knowing that they're lies. They don't want to step up and challenge it. Charles Sophie, a Los Angeles-based psychiatrist and medical director for the County of Los Angeles Department of Children and Family Services says that a bully gains power in a relationship by reducing another's power and shows little regard for the consequences to the victim's health or well-being. Behavior from adult bullies is more subtle and oftentimes more sophisticated than what a child might employ according to Dr. Selfie. Gaslighting is a common yet poorly understood tactic in which a person makes a victim question their own reality. This controlling behavior is done slowly over time through small manipulative words or actions and the victim starts to doubt their memory, their judgment and abilities, ultimately limiting their ability to confidently perform tasks in the workplace or their personal life because they don't know exactly what is true anymore, because they are constantly challenged in that area. If you feel your power being diminished by another, you need to question that relationship, says Dr. Sophie. Bullies operate everywhere, and they can be your partners, professors, colleagues, grown children. Any adults who are unsure if they're being bullied need to go to someone else and describe the situation as if it were happening to someone else. You say, if a friend told you this story, how would you react? That way you can get another perspective on why you're struggling with that situation. And most likely they'll tell you that it's abuse. And you can see the situation more clearly if you remove yourself from the story, Dr. Sophie advises. He also recommends that you spend time reviewing common bullying tactics in order to identify and inventory the inflicted behaviors. So I spent about 10 years out working in the, the jails and prison systems of Minnesota. And it was a very steady um, amount of trainings between all these institutions to teach those of us who were coming in the tactics of those on the inside, basically how they could spin your life out in five minutes. 
And so we were constantly learning the different um, games offenders play is kind of how it would spell out. And it was just intense trickery, you know, from getting an extra piece of fruit for a meal to just what they could do with that one compromise, how far they could take that so subtly that you did not see where you were until you're they're sitting threatening your children on the playground because they know exactly who they are what their names are what, what their ages are I mean it's incredible how fast it moves so this kind of it's good to know ahead by and now Google you can find probably all the resources about this in workplace documents of what exactly qualifies as bullying, intimidation, you can find it very clearly stated. So don't just put up with it. You need to research if you are being abused and you need to report it if you are. There is absolutely nothing good that comes out of allowing it to continue because that means more people will be subject to it you will suffer your life how much of your life do you want to lose to this when you could do something about it the person who is the most responsible person that reports it is the one who hopefully will aid the offender the abuser the bully into making necessary changes that will actually allow them to come to christ workplaces and definitely ministries and churches need to lead well in this area and give a very safe avenue to report intimidation or manipulation for their workers if you do not have that i am with the amount of bullying that's going on even in social media i i would want to know why not because it's like the biggest issue almost out there is people being intimidated and it's getting worse and worse by the issue it absolutely has to be done and this avenue also needs to include a process a clear process that is followed that causes change and accountability not just listening not just letting them write a report the worst indictment for a workplace or especially a church or a ministry would be that even one person left feeling broken, disrespected, unheard. That would be a terrible indictment because if Jesus matters, only people people matter to him he doesn't care about the size he doesn't care about the funds he doesn't care about the excellent product he cares about how you treat your people that's it so if you can't excel in that being your priority and that isn't the thing that you're guarding and hovering is that people's quality of experience is protected you missed it you missed it completely the mandates of heaven for what you're doing you just turned a different way and sadly to turn off that course because those things must be withheld upheld and prioritized for the gospel to go forth you have come under enemy rule you can succeed all day long you can make you can give amazing salaries. You can have uh, numbers and numbers and numbers. But if your priorities are not the same as those of God himself and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you drifted from your mission. And it will definitely show up in the end. In First of all, where you end up, because many who believe that they're leaders in the faith community the the bible is clear they're not even going to make heaven because their deception and causing many to go lost is going to be a very high price they likely will go lost themselves 
it is worth getting that straightened out. A medical professional can support the healing process that many have as a result of the bullying, going to the doctors, getting medication for high blood pressure, loss of sleep, anxiety, depression. There's many people under medical care because of the abuse they're enduring at work from specific people. And it would be good for many to add counseling to that list of not just getting medical care, but getting counseling because it's very much needed to not take the effects of the bullying into your own home. I mean, everyone can feel when somebody's getting beat down, it just, everyone can see it. And you certainly can't always beat a bully at their own game. Dr. Sophie cautions that the long-term consequences to the victim are very significant, but direct confrontation doesn't change the bully's behavior very often. He urges victims to find a way out of the situation and the relationship. Isn't that sad? This is workplace. This is a professional. He's saying you probably won't be successful to confront the behavior. It's best to just get out. I actually agree with that. It's important to remember that workplace bullying, just like all other forms of bullying, should never be taken lightly. Lives are being just completely destroyed by it. Exposure to bullying harms your health, your well-being, physically, emotionally, throughout the whole body. Therefore, it's going to impact your marriages. It's going to impact children. And then children's lives are impacted because their parents are suffering. The compounding effects of allowing a bully to continue bullying people and pressuring and intimidating people is like a ripple that just goes on and on and on because those around them are reckless and don't care about their people. The workplace bullying study states that stress-related diseases and health complications from prolonged exposure to the stressors of bullying include anxiety, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, hypertension, neurological structural changes to create a stressed brain, panic attacks, post-traumatic stress disorder, and skin disorders. We all need to remember that most have been victims but most of us have been bullies as well. We need to balance our own role in this. And the grace of Jesus is more than sufficient for both. So it's more than enough for those who persecute others currently and those who need healing from being persecuted. The grace of God is enough for both. Proverbs 12, 8 says, There's one whose rash words are like sword thrusts but the tongue of the wise brings healing. If you are being bullied, it's imperative that you surround yourself with people that are healthy and speaking into your life the truth. If you are the bully, it is also imperative that you surround yourself with people that hold you accountable and enforce that you become a respectful and honoring person to all people. Matthew 10, 28 says, And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. That's why you want your record cleared by the time you meet Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12, 10 says, For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Psalm 118, 13 through 14 says, I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Absolutely 1000% true. Godquestions.org writes that many of the biblical principles that apply to the issue of bullying, there are just many throughout the whole Bible. The word bully isn't used, but the principles are strong against the behavior. Bullies are those who prey 
on people they perceive as weaker and they threaten them in some way with some kind of harm, whether it's emotional, physical, they actually, but they make them feel threatened in order for the bully to get their own way in a matter. And bully in any form is not godly. Christians are called to love others and to look out for those who are weaker, not to intimidate, never to manipulate. And it's being evident that Christians think somehow bullying can be acceptable in causes, in politics, in... There's never, there is never an allowance for bullying. In fact, if someone feels that bullying is acceptable, they're not reading the Bible for one thing, they don't know Jesus for another, Therefore, their salvation is definitely to be challenged. There, it's a total oxymoron to think that you can be a follower of Jesus and someone who intimidates and bullies. Not possible. It is not consistent with being born again and being a person who gives life from Jesus to others. It is not possible. There are two general situations in which a Christian may need to respond to bullying when he's a victim of bullying and when he's a witness to bullying and when being bullied a right response might be turning the other cheek or it might be self-defense but when jesus spoke of turning the other cheek in matthew 8 38 to 42 he taught us to refrain from retaliating by pulling in personal rights over slights the idea is not to return an insult with an insult. That's what he was talking about. When someone verbally abuses us, we are not to turn around and verbally abuse them back. When someone tries to intimidate us or force us into certain behavior, we are allowed to resist manipulation, but not to be manipulative in return. So bullying a bully is not biblical and it's not helpful. Reporting a bully to proper authorities, that is what you are to do. It is not wrong for a child in school to alert his teacher that he's being bullied. It is not wrong for a person to report a criminal to the police or an abuser in the home or work to proper authorities. These actions may prevent the bully from harming even more people if people just condone it, condone it, condone it, condone it, you now become a person that's also helping this. When you could be the one who stops it, if you do not, you are now helping a bully. We should not retaliate on a personal level, but we should use all systems to get bullying behavior stopped. In other cases, particularly if the bullying is physical, self-defense may be appropriate. The Bible does not support allowing it to continue when you know it's happening. Christians are to be loving and forgiving, but never permitting of evil. If you know that a child is being abused and you do not report it, you are offending God. There is no chance that is acceptable. If you know a woman or a man is being battered by a spouse, that's a little tougher because many of them will not make the choice to leave the abuse, but you should at least quietly offer them help if they ever want it but it is very important if you are aware of and know someone is being abused on the job at a home in the in any kind of church setting i am dumbfounded at things that happen in church settings we must do the right thing. And when a Christian observes bullying or intimidation, manipulation, which is witchcraft, it at times can be helpful to step in and support the victim, but in many situations, stepping in is going to create an even worse problem because bullies do not like to be told they're doing something to someone else. They fire it up even harder, and you could now become a target. It, 
it's a way to approach it, but it's not the best way often because of the nature of bullies. They are so reactionary when confronted that it almost isn't helpful. But you find a way to come to the aid of the one who is being bullied, whether that be to pull in authority, however that looks, certainly help the person who's being bullied, but how you do it needs to be done very safely. God's wisdom is necessary in all circumstances where you're confronting a bully because often, whether it's verbal or physical, they are violent in their response. And those who follow Christ have the Holy Spirit living within them. And he will help you understand and look at the situation. If not, pull someone in who's not in the situation and have them guide you. Pull in your pastor. Hopefully he will have the fortitude to at least address it. If your pastor supports bullying, I would leave the church. We also need to consider our thoughts and attitudes towards bullies, um, not to demonize them, of course, not to think of them as hateful. That's not godly, so to respond in kind and of the same attitude as them is not the right response. We are all born into sin and we all need salvation. So you should pray that the bully comes to salvation, that they would have a change of heart, that they would see their sin, that they would see their offense towards God, and that they would come to the end of themselves and choose to be a follower of Christ, ultimately causing a bully to come to Christ is going to be a much better solution for everyone because they will stop bullying where confronting bullies only makes them oftentimes bully more more bully you more and bully more people the bullies many know who study that mindset are damaged there's no way that they're not a lot of them grew up being bullied they are very insecure oftentimes many of them are jealous very jealous of the people that they tend to bully they're afraid these people are going to get more recognition more reward more attention more money so they're just incredibly competitive with them and keeping them knocked down so insecurity former um, aggression towards them when they were little makes that rise up in them to um, start bullying others so it doesn't keep happening to them just emotional immaturity um, is consistently there and the only way that this group feels acceptable to themselves is by belittling others but just know that there's an extensive amount of damage in them Otherwise, if there wasn't and they were healed, this wouldn't even be an issue. We can extend God's love and grace to them, but maintain solid boundaries to address their wrong behavior because they are very broken. They're very hurt. Um, people don't abuse people if they're not. They're, something's terribly wrong that they can abuse people with no, no catch. Whether it's driven by past hurt or simply their sin, God is the one who will bring healing and change to them if they will come to him for that. And he is very eager to help and heal a bully because many of us have been brought from one to the other. It's always appropriate to pray for bullies and also pray for their victims. Similarly, when we are the victim of bullying, we can go to God and ask for healing from all the damage done by the abusers. But do not force people who have been bullied and damaged by bullying to have to reconcile that relationship physically. I am amazed at how many in the faith think that that is an expectation. 
The person who abuses and bullies others, whether it's in the home or in the workplace or in ministry or a church, have lost their right to be able to have fellowship with the people they have abused. There is consequence to this behavior and you may come to Christ and you may change your behavior, but that does not entitle you to get everything back that you blew up. You don't, you are not entitled to those relationships. What you need to do is honor them, give them the freedom from you respectfully, not talk about them and um, talk them down and spew bitterness because they no longer want space with you for their own mental safety. People who are in leading roles should never be trying to force that under the guise of you need to forgive because those are two very separate conversations. Making sure people forgive is critical, but adding reconciliation into that process is definitely not an appropriate thing to do in many cases. They are two separate things and they should not be one required for the other. God has shown us incredible mercy and we need to show that same thing to all others, but not by bullying ever. We need to defend the weak, be willing to forgive. We need to prevent bullying every way we can through appropriate channels pray for the bullies pray for those who are bullied and then extend the love and grace of god to everyone that we can but those who are abusive to other people do not they are not owed the companionship of others we should constantly examine our actions and motives to make sure they line up with what the word says on how we treat people and we need to constantly be filtering our choices through does this please God or am I unpleasing to him in how I'm acting Neil Hardin writes on a Christian's proper response to bullying he says if you see something say something period Reporting bullying to proper authorities is one of the most important choices we can make to prevent more bullying. So if you're not helping prevent it, you're helping spread it, even if you personally aren't doing it. But you see it, you're around it, and you do nothing. Don't be afraid to tell others what's going on, whether you are the one being bullied or the witness. It is not tattling to report bullying. Tattling tells on someone when they want them in trouble. Reporting bullying is motivated by a desire to protect other people. Reporting bullying protects you. It protects the person being bullied, everyone around you, and it actually protects the bully. I was once victimized by someone in authority over me on a job, and it involved... It involved... Um, theft of significant property and I went to him and he the the response was was frightening actually it was to threaten me back for even daring to bring it up so I went to his authority to ask for help as I said I'm going to need to resign for my safety but I just want you to know what happened and then he said to me this was his question when I laid out the evidence of what had happened. He said, he is like a son to me. Do you want him to go to heaven or to hell? And I was very surprised by that question. I said, well, um, heaven. And he said, then you need to help me get him there. He says, we are going to the police. We are going to report this. He needs to be made accountable for what he did. And I was so shocked because I knew how close they were. And I was so shocked. This man had lost his own son in the service. And he said that this person had, had been how he had 
gotten through a lot of things and he loved him like his son. And so it was like stunning to me. One of the most important lessons I have ever seen in action, and he did, he held him accountable the whole way. Doing nothing helps bullies because it allows them to continue bullying, continue victimizing, continue destroying people without consequences. And we need to have the courage to stand up for those who can't or won't defend themselves because there comes a time and place where the person who's constantly being bullied is shutting down. They're shutting down because nobody is helping them. And of course, always use wisdom. We don't need to start destroying even more people in the mix. If there's a situation that looks dangerous, call the police. Let them figure out how dangerous it is. We need to understand who we are in Christ. That is critical. Psalm 139, 13 through 18 tells us we're fearfully and wonderfully made, all of us, even the bullies. God's th all of us, including our own ability to bully. God's thoughts towards us are too numerous to count. We need to know how special we are to God, that we are created in his image with immeasurable worth and value. We cannot let bullies influence how we feel about ourselves. We cannot let ourselves influence how we feel about ourselves. We have to stay locked on what does God tell me is true about me. And healing takes years at times from this kind of impact and again, forcing reconciliation between a bully and a victim is a wrong choice, often for both, not just one. That is not a choice that another person should make. That should be completely up to the victim. Please do not pressure victims this way by saying it is biblical that if they have been mistreated, disrespected, publicly maligned, don't don't add to that situation by saying it's biblical that you reconcile you need to forgive saying that if they haven't reconciled it's a forgiveness issue because what you're doing is the same thing you're adding more abuse more bullying more intimidation when someone makes the victim somehow responsible for putting back together what was torn apart by others, that's insane behavior. You also are helping the bullies. Always lift up and care for the victims, but not put the pressure on them to fix what the bullies did. That is not theirs to fix. Therapists, all the good therapists I've ever talked to said they will not pursue reconciliation in a relationship that's been damaged by physical and serious emotional abuse, sometimes just serious emotional abuse. They said, that is not on the table. Reconciliation is not even on the table. They're trying to help this person get themselves back, but definitely not to reconcile. They feel that person has lost every right to have that person back in their life. And as long as they keep pushing for it, nothing has been learned, nothing has been changed. If a person really understands that they have harmed others that way with their tactics of um, all the different tactics, they will humbly back away and stop. They will not continue demanding on a conversation or a some sense of we're okay. If you get it, if I get it that I have really wounded someone, you need to just respect them and honor them and leave them alone. They need to be healed and not constantly staying vigilant because you're thinking you need them healed and you healed and if you have victimized someone in any way you need to just leave them be when we're in the midst of a very painful situation like this it's easy to forget who we are in christ 
our value has been shattered. It's also easy to forget how he's called us to act and respond. So if you find yourself ever being victimized like this, here's two things to remember. First, never try to get even. Don't bully back. Don't seek revenge. God is the one who will judge. He is the one who will repay the evil that has been done. So if you just kick that on up to him, I promise you, it's the best place to leave it. The Bible asks us to love our enemies and pray for them, but do not try to overcome the evil being done to you by doing evil in return. Rather, be respectful in return. Don't do it back. Don't respond back with the same. It's completely okay to stick up for yourself if you're being bullied. People get confused by that turn the other cheek verse, but most commentators of the Bible agree that those verses were not referring to severe physical or emotional abuse, but rather insults. When we look at context, Jesus was teaching his disciples about the suffering they were going to endure for being a Christian, and his primary concern is speaking against the eye for an eye mentality of revenge that was prevalent in that culture. He was not speaking against self-defense. Jesus himself, when he was slapped unjustly, did not turn the other cheek, but he questioned his accusers. And from other parts of the Bible, using physical force to defend yourself has been deemed permissible in some circumstances. However, that is only to be allowed in situations where you are being physically assaulted and you have no other choice. Using the amount of force necessary to escape, not to get revenge. So sticking up for yourself may be difficult to do, but if you're able to stay in control of yourself and somehow keep it respectful, you have every right as an image bearer of God to defend yourself and speak the truth. You are allowed to be defended. We need to reach out to those who are being bullied. One of the best ways to do that is to befriend them, encourage them, offer them companionship because what happens many times is the victim, especially in a workplace, is isolated. Everyone is like, I don't want that happening to me. And they completely separate from the person and leave them abandoned because nobody is brave enough to do the right thing which makes everybody in their own right uh, also a bully when they align with the bullying system the victims are the ones you should be aligning with if you want to please jesus not only will that make the victim feel less alone but it also tends to deter the bullies because bullies are less likely to pick on someone if they have people around them supporting them bullying is always wrong and as christians we are called to act in love and kindness towards everyone even the ones who wrong us we are commanded to honor other people we're called to stand up for the vulnerable and the weak we're called to do good in face of being mistreated and we're also called to do good when we see others being mistreated we are to help them but not to handle those situations alone because as I said, they can be very tricky and dangerous. You should involve the church, authorities, family, friends. You involve whoever is needed and whoever will handle it in an appropriate way. Psalm 41.1 says, Blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. Zechariah 7 9 says this is what the Lord Almighty said administer true justice show mercy and compassion to one another if you're a bully or being bullied God loves you victims can know that this is not something God just lets happen and then it messes up our life God will use it in a powerful way and he will use it to promote you to advance you he will also heal you. He is your advocate. There is tremendous blessing coming your way if you endure without retaliating. God will bless you in a huge way. And for the bully, I hope that those who listen who are bullies are feeling convicted that they have been in the role of a bully 
in someone else's life and they go and make amends and they make it right. If you don't want to take responsibility for being a bully, I would, I would urge you to consider meeting Jesus and having that all come up there with all the time that you had to make it right and bring some kind of healing to your victim and you chose not to. Oftentimes, the person who's aggressing does not want to admit that what they did was indeed a crime against that person. I see this in domestics when I'm involved in those when the abuser could be the woman or the man i'm not saying which one is it doesn't it's whoever the abuser is realizes that the victim is not going to come running back to them like they have in the past they will suddenly see the light suddenly they understand what went wrong and they're saying i get it now i see it now i see and I've seen them vow to listen. I will sit down and listen. If you want a safe person there, I will sit down and I will listen to your feelings. I will listen to how you feel. But when you say to them, I want to hear you tell me why you put your hands around my neck and smash me up against the wall so I can't breathe. I want to talk about that, why you would do that to me. Suddenly this person backs off because they don't really want to talk about that. What they are willing to do is listen to their victim talk about their feelings and the impact, but they have no desire to take ownership of the offenses that got them in that position. And I am amazed at how many people in prominent positions take the offender's willingness to come and just listen to his victim bleed about her circumstances and how she feels. They assume she's wrong for not wanting to have that meeting when he is already saying, I don't want to talk about what I did. I'm willing to listen to her and have her share with me how she feels but I don't want that discussed. I don't want it to become about me. They prefer if they can leave it in their mind as she had a lot of trauma before, she had an abusive boyfriend before, she had abusive parents, so she sees everything as abusive. I don't do much of anything, but she sees it as abusive and I need to have empathy for her because she's broken by her past trauma. They would prefer to just keep moving along that way don't partner with that it happens way too often if they're willing to come to a certain place but not to full accountability of what happened don't get involved in that you need to let her continue to heal in privacy without forcing reconciliation if you have dishonored someone and damage occurred and you know it did you should make it right today don't wait make it right and in my experiences, when damage has really occurred, if it doesn't happen, I haven't had too many say, I wanna make that right, I wanna make amends. I can't even think of one right now, but if that were the case, I think I would still shake if I heard that they wanted to have that conversation because of the combined impact of all a bunch of things that have happened. So I would say I don't want that meeting because I, I just don't want that meeting. They could write a letter through my pastor because I don't even think I would want the letter directly to me. I would want it to come through my pastor. So I would say that if you do feel you need to make amends with someone and you have harmed them and they're not in any communication with you at the time, you should write the, that through a spiritual leader that um, 
can screen that for them because they're actually probably going to be terrified to read it. People are allowed the freedom without needing to be chastised and told that they're in the wrong and unforgiving because they won't come to the table when the abuser is seeking to make amends. Completely more abuse to demand that of them. And I would advise again that amends happen through a pastor or a really involved counselor on the part of the victim who can make sure that it does not cause more harm. These situations do not change overnight. The healing takes a long time and if you're going to make amends with someone, you should be very gentle and do it in the least, um, you should do it in a way that does not bring any more fear to them. We should be a voice for the voiceless, a light in dark places, and God often uses the hardest relationships we have had to bring forth the best good in us, the best good for many others, and that is exactly my story precious lord you use everything you use absolutely everything from the complete um, destruction caused by abuse to our own um, being able to recognize just how abusive we have been to others and I ask that everybody be allowed to see both sides of their own life and to glean the best possible fruit from being able to see both sides and not flowing in judgment towards, towards anyone, just to determine to pull every part of our lives into obedience to Jesus Christ. I ask that you stop at nothing to unify the body of Christ, that you would do whatever it takes in each individual for them to place the gospel and the lost at the front of our priorities, and that all offenses can be thrown down, that people will truly be about the Father's business at this time we do see what's happening in our world and we especially pray for those who are being critically persecuted right now we know the persecution of the church is high we ask god that you would the grace would just overwhelm those areas and that you would help us to take advantage of our freedoms while we have them that we would not wait because we probably won't have them much longer so help us to be bold witnesses for you Jesus while we can I ask that you would help us to be only after your character and your what you want us to be I ask that you burn any personal agendas out of us that you completely destroy the self life in us even those with self-hatred and self-pity, just burn it out, God, and help people to rise up and be, be the army that you need in this day. Forgive us, God, for all of our complacency and help us to be bold for you like we've been bold for so many other crazy things. Help us to be bold for you. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen.